These are five of the many reasons that I have not one, but two slow cookers, both bought on sale, of course. And this is about the closest I've come to having hired help, like a housekeeper or cook in the house. These slow cookers are my secret to getting home cooked meals on the table without being a slave to the kitchen. This is one of my son's favorite school lunches, and he asks for it about once a week, and I happily oblige because he's eating vegetables. I start by soaking the carrots in my produce soak solution, which I have a video for up in the eye above. Then I wash them under some water and cut off the bottoms and cut the carrots in half so that they'll fit better in the crock. This is about three pounds of carrots. Both of my crock pots are three quarts in size. And because we love carrots, I always make a full pot. Place the larger bottom halves toward the bottom and the thinner halves on the top. This way it will allow for a much more even cooking. No additional water is needed for the cooking if you're using freshly washed carrots. There's enough water left on them for the cooking process. I place it on low for 8 to 10 hours until the carrots are soft. To make the sushi, I sliced the carrots thinly. Here I sliced four halves of the carrots to make three rolls for two of my son's lunches. To the carrots, I add one tablespoon of soy sauce and about one teaspoon of oil. It's best to let it marinate overnight. I'm using simple, plain, steamed medium grain rice here. I'm placing a thin layer on a nori sheet. Then I sprinkle some furekake, a Japanese seasoning mix made with sesame seeds, salt, sugar, and seaweed down the center of the rice. Then place some carrots in the middle. I make sure to dip my fingers in some of that marinade to prevent sticking, and that works a lot better for me than any tool like a mat or saran wrap. Just lift the nori sheet, press the filling with the top of the fingers, and fold and roll. Then cut the roll in half and then in half again and repeat until we have eight even cuts. I am a huge fan of roasted garlic and it's my favorite for dips and spreads. I really like that this is oil free as well. I use a small oven proof ceramic ramekin for this, but you can use foil if that's what you have. I'm making two bulbs worth here, and to fit them better in the ramekin, I'm breaking one of the bulbs in two pieces. Next, I cut the tips off just to reveal some of the garlic cloves. This makes removing the end product much easier. Then I Tetris the pieces in the ramekin and cover it with another oven safe glass container. Again, you can use foil if that's what you have, but I like it better this way because I can easily see when my garlic is done. And please don't discard the tops of the garlic. You can add them into your container and they'll cook along just fine with the rest of the garlic. Or you can add them to another dish, which is what I ended up doing. I add a small amount of water to the bottom of the crock and cook on high for four hours. If you're wrapping your garlic in foil, just be sure to wrap it tightly and follow the same method by adding a small amount of water to the crock. This water is to prevent the crock from getting too dry and cracking. Foil will take about four hours as well, but be sure to use low heat instead. Once the garlic is cooled, it's really easy to pull out the number of cloves that you need. I find that you have a lot less waste if you peel the cloves instead of trying to squeeze the garlic out like they show you on TV. I feel like when you squeeze it, there's a lot of waste that's left on the inside and this is not something that I really want to waste. My favorite way to eat this is spread on an English muffin with my coffee for breakfast. Delicious! We call this one green eggs no ham. The slow cooker is a great way to cook eggs for a lot of dishes. It makes a nice blob of egg for easy no peel egg salad recipes. Just be sure to use a well-oiled oven safe container.
and fill it up until it's about three quarters full. Here I'm making seven eggs for my son's breakfasts for the week. I'm adding about a teaspoon of salt and beating them up because that's the way my son likes his eggs. Then to cook it, I put a quarter inch of water in the crock and cook on high for 60 to 90 minutes. I can tell the eggs are done when the middle starts to dome up and when you touch the egg, it has a springiness about it. It does tend to discolor when cooked this way, but no one minds at all. And it makes an easy breakfast that anyone can throw together. I let it cool on the countertop, then stick it in the fridge. The next morning, I can run my knife all along the edge to release the egg out of the container and slice it into five. And the nicest part for me is that the container I cooked it in is also the storage container. It's also a lot easier for me to clean this egg off the container rather than my pot. Green eggs, no ham. Although my family loves bacon, I really don't. I dislike that cooking it in the house makes it smell like bacon for days. The slow cooker allows me to avoid this. I start with a pound of bacon and slice the strips into one inch chunks, then make an even layer on the bottom. For this, I make sure to crack the lid slightly to allow any steam to escape. And I move it to the garage and cook it there. Put it on high for four hours total. Starting at about two hours, I'll check it every hour afterwards and give it a good stir. This way of cooking it has very little cleanup and splatter. And when it's done, I can drain it all on brown paper bag and store it in a container for the fridge for my boys to eat throughout the week. This has been revolutionary at our house. To make these caramelized onions, I start by putting one teaspoon of oil at the bottom of a crock and I spread it all around the bottom and the sides. Then I peel and slice brown onions into about a quarter inch thick slices. Just keep peeling and slicing and filling. I was crying so hard at the end of all of this, but it was really well worth all the tears. Five medium onions filled the crock pretty well and made about three cups of caramelized onions. Be sure to keep those onion scraps in a bag in the freezer. Once this bag is full of veggie scraps, I throw it all in a slow cooker with some water to make a really nice vegetable broth. Another use for the slow cooker. To cook the onion, I make sure to keep a small crack on the lid and cook it for 10 hours outside of the house. After 10 hours on low, you have caramelized onions. No salt, no extra seasoning. Add those at the end if you like, but we like ours plain. These add so much flavor to foods. They're not exactly like the stovetop caramelized onions, but they're pretty darn close. And for me to not have to slave over a stove and smell of onion all day, it's a very worthwhile trade-off for me. Five delicious hacks for your slow cooker. I hope you can see why we own two, and I hope you get to try some of these. What are some of your favorite slow cooker recipes or hacks? Let me know down in the comments. I'd love to hear. Thanks for watching, and I wish you happy slow cooking. Oh, the pain. My eyes. It's so sad. I'm like ugly onion crying right now.